Hey guys, welcome back to Dixie Bell's YouTube channel. It's Lauren here again on this fine Friday. We are going to be flipping this French Provincial dresser right here. And I actually got this for free. It was located on Facebook Marketplace and it was just about 15 minutes south of my house. And we, well, just actually me, I went down over there and I was like, oh, it was only posted 12 minutes ago. I got this, I'm gonna race over there. So I did, I picked it up. I basically loaded it by myself until the guy was like, oh, hey, if you just wait a minute, I'll help you. So I was like, okay, I already almost got it in, but thanks. So he helped me finish loading it up, but I am excited. I have done one other furniture piece that was French Provincial, and those were those two nightstands. This one is much bigger, but look at the handles on it. It is beautiful. So we're gonna get this prepped here at the house. And then this video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna be doing the rest of the process after prep over at an event that's happening tomorrow here in my area. And it's our first ever event, so I'm excited but I am excited also to show the people at the event kind of how I do things. So we thought it would be fun to take some furniture over there and have me actually painting it during the show. So here we go. We're gonna get the hardware off and then do some cleaning. And of course, showing off the Dixie Bell paint line to all of the people who are gonna attend this show. Okay, so this hardware. Oh is gonna be stubborn. Guys, look at it. It's French Provincial, but it's like a little bit unique and I love it. We're gonna see if we can clean this up with some white lightning. Hardware is so old, it's being a pain. These screws don't want to come out. Had to break out the flathead screwdriver. Okay, I've got it off. Okay, now it's time to clean. And the reason we take off the hardware first is because as you can see, underneath that hardware is just completely yucky, especially on these older pieces. You can just see the green and look. So we definitely need to clean under that. I'm gonna be using my white lightning and last time I used this, I decided to put it in a spray bottle so that way I'm not wasting it every single time. This actually, I got some tips on some other people that use Dixie Bell, so thank you. Shout out to all of you people. I'm actually gonna spray the hardware here first and I'll also put probably some more and soak it in there in a little bit. I'm just planning on cleaning this up so it's gonna be the original hardware. So you can actually see the finish coming off, uh, the color of the finish coming off when I sprayed that white lightning. So that tells me that this is gonna be a bleeder. So even though it's silk paint, I still am probably gonna prime. Ew, that's like some of the dirtiest water. Now, that's partially the finish, the color of the actual dresser, but now we're gonna rinse it off, so I'm gonna dump this out. That's disgusting. Okay, 
Okay, our next step of prep is to grab out my sander and smooth everything out, but also roughen everything up because we want that paint to adhere. After I get to sanding, I am going to be addressing all of the damaged veneer and things like that and any gouges that need to be filled in. I've got my surf prep sander, I've got my mask, and we're ready to sand. I'm gonna be using 120 grit because I don't necessarily wanna go all the way down, but I, there's a lot of things on the top, like just grossness, I guess, and scratches, and so the 120 is gonna help me get all of that smoothed out, and then I'll come back with a little bit of a finer um, sandpaper and do one more time. Okay, that was a lot more sanding than I thought. But we got all the gouges, scratches out, so our next step is to check out where the veneer is missing on a couple of the drawers especially, because I want those drawers to be nice and smooth. So we're gonna go ahead and put some Dixie mud on there before I come back and do that finer grid of sandpaper. I'll just do the last once over with the sandpaper once that Dixie mud is dry. Okay, got my Dixie mud. It's kind of like wood filler, so we're gonna use it to fill any gashes or any missing veneer as well. And then once it dries, we'll of course sand it down to make it flush. So the biggest part that I noticed uh, when I first picked it up, but again, it was free, so no complaints, um, is just down here where there were some pieces of missing veneer. So I just wanna make all of that flush to the, as if it did have veneer on it. So basically all you do is put some in place. I've just got this plastic spatula here that I'm using to apply and that's also on Dixie Bell's website. Okay, so I'm just looking around everywhere where there may just be any places that I wanna fill. When I was sanding the top, I really tried to get all of those scratches and gouges out because that was really just on that top layer. So I did a really good job. And so that means that I don't have to fill any on this surface. Okay, but there was um, a few little spots here that had gotten dented, so I do just want to fill that. Okay, and then now just the drawers. All right, the Dixie Mud is on. That's gonna dry. And then we'll be able to sand down everything one more time, because remember I did a pretty medium grit um, for the first time around, and so I'll wanna do a little bit of a finer grit, probably like a 320, 400, just to make sure everything is smooth and you won't be able to see these sanding marks. So we're gonna let it dry and then we'll be back. So we're gonna go ahead and sand down the Dixie mud that I had applied yesterday. So we're just gonna get that all even against the surface. I'm just using my sanding block to smooth everything out. Okay, microfiber cloth, wiping everything down. All right, we're all wiped down, so we're ready to paint. Here we go. We are going to paint. So I'm gonna be using Dixie Bell's silk paint all in one. This does not need a primer or a top coat or anything. So I had mentioned that I might prime because I knew that finish was popping through. But since this has a built-in primer, we're gonna put it to the test. And hopefully it doesn't bleed through and hopefully this paint does its job. I'm also using the well-loved Scarlet brush from Dixie Belle. It's getting a little painted on, but hey, the brushes still work. It's a synthetic brush, so that really 
just allows that paint to go on really smoothly. With the silk paint, you don't need to use any mister or water to smooth it out. It's just a self-leveling paint, so that is going to really help us get that smooth finish. This blue is crazy. I like this blue a lot. I'm just gonna mix it up to get all the colors solid. All right, I think we've got it all mixed in. So we're gonna paint now. All right. So with the silk paint, you wanna make sure that you're not working it too much. So just basically a few swipes across will be plenty for it. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the edges here. We got coat number one on and it's got really, really good coverage here, as you can see. But there are still a few spots where we're gonna have to go back and touch up. So we'll just do one more coat once all of this dries. Okay, we're back home, you guys. That event was awesome, but with the rain and the people and just interacting with everybody, I just didn't quite get a lot of work done or as much as I had anticipated. The event was awesome, we really loved it, and I just wanna say thank you guys for bearing with us. I know this video is just a little bit different. We started at home, went to an event, did one coat, and then now we're back at home. And I'm ready to do coat number two, so I'm just gonna do a quick light sand and then wipe everything off and do that second coat. The color Harbor, the silk paint is beautiful. It actually kind of matches my sign a little bit, <laughs> but I got so many compliments when I was painting it. People were like, oh my gosh, that blue, that blue, that blue. So, so I'm crossing my fingers that someone on the market will also love this blue, but let's get back to work. The reason we are doing just a quick sand in between coats is because it's just a tad bit rough. So I just wanna smooth everything out. It's, there's no brush stroke marks, but it's just a bit rough from the way the paint dries. And so I'm just gonna do that quick sand and then we'll be ready. Also, I don't know about you, but remember when I was worried about the color popping through? Well, this paint is doing its job. That primer built in is not allowing for any color to pop through. So that was a great test, because like I said, this dresser was a bleeder. Like if I would have done it regular or white or something like that, it would have been so yellow or red, but it's not. Okay, we are finished with the second coat. So that's just gonna dry now. And then we'll go ahead and put the drawers back in and reattach the hardware. Cause remember the silk paint is a top coat built in. So we don't have to do that top coat. So that means that we are just waiting on the dry time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting these drawers in and then we're gonna go ahead and put some hardware 
And I'm gonna wipe out the insides of the drawers as well. I already did this one, so let's go ahead and get it in there. And then let's go ahead and put this new hardware on. All right, there's one drawer. Now we keep going. All right, drawers are in, hardware's on. I was just sanding back a little bit of the areas where I had gotten some paint on the tops of the dresser sides, but the last thing I'm gonna be doing is taking some Big Mama's Butter, and this is just going to be revitalizing the insides of the drawers. So I'm gonna take my brush here and just apply that in a swirly motion and it's gonna give it a little bit of a smell, but it's really just gonna revitalize the wood inside the drawer since it is solid wood. All right, that does it for the Big Mama's Butter, and that does it for our piece of furniture. You guys, this is probably one of my favorite pieces. I don't know why, I'm just really loving the French Provincial right now, and this color, it is even better than I imagined it to be. And I don't remember if I said this already, but I think that this would just look awesome in a nursery for even a boy or a girl. Um, I know it's blue and it's not really a neutral color, but this would be perfect for even a little girl's room too. So I'm gonna go ahead and stage this up so that we can take some photos and so that we can list it on Facebook Marketplace. I just wanna do a little bit of pop of gold since the hardware is kind of that gold brassy color. And then, like I said, I think that this would be so cute in a little kid's room. So my favorite animals are penguins and that kind of just adds a little kid friendly touch. But other than that, it doesn't have to be anything crazy when you're staging. And I think that this one in particular, the piece truly speaks for itself. And we've got some great lighting here, soft lighting, no harsh shadows, things like that, which is what you really want when you're taking photos of furniture. And you just wanna go ahead and get up close, accentuate the different accents of the piece, you know, take photos from all of the angles so that you're not hiding anything. And then of course, in just a minute, I'll go ahead and unstage everything, take some more photos, take the photos of the insides of the drawers, which by the way, are looking lovely with that Suzanne's Garden, Big Mama's Butter. And it's got even a little bit of a scent to it still. So, all right, let's, go ahead and get this listed. So I always wanna make sure to go ahead and get the dimensions of the piece, explain it a little bit. Um, it's style, French provincial. This one's a really easy one to name that style. Um, if you've got a piece that maybe you're not sure of, try Googling different styles of furniture and what they look like, modern, mid-century, French provincial, farmhouse, etc. Like I said, this one's pretty easy. Curvy French provincial lines and handles. You guys know that. This one I am thinking about listing at a pretty decent price. Um, I had a little bit of experience selling some nightstands. And actually, if you haven't had a chance to check out that video, I did some French provincial nightstands here a couple of Fridays ago. Go check that video out. Actually, at that time, I hadn't sold the pieces, but as of this video, I actually did sell those pieces for full asking price of $350 for two nightstands. <laughs> that kind of blew my mind, but that also tells me that French Provincial is 
well sought after and people are willing to pay because that was not the only person that wanted those nightstands and actually I got two commission pieces off of those nightstands. So that tells you price high, you can always drop it. I think I'm gonna go at 350 for this piece alone and we're gonna see what happens. Hopefully my market takes this bright blue pretty well, but let's go get that posted. So I know I said I was gonna list it at 350, but I ended up doing a little bit more at 375 and I haven't had any hits on it. It is a very out there bold piece and I know that. I'm confident that that right buyer is going to be coming along. I'm gonna hold on to my price for a little while longer. It's been up for just about a week and so I'm just gonna continue to be patient because that's the hardest part of furniture flipping if you're gonna sell your pieces, but hang in there that right buyer will come and then after another week or so I'll probably start to lower the price just little by little probably by increments of just $25 and that way I can still get my top dollar on this piece now it was free so minus the all-in-one silk paint which is about $25 per can I'm gonna be getting straight profit so We'll say, you know, if I sell this for that 350 minus the can, which I didn't even use all of the can of paint, but minus that $25 is around a profit of $325. So that will be an awesome profit for minimal work. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this and you guys were able to see how these brighter colors can also look good on the more dated furniture such as a French provincial piece. It kind of just gives it a completely different vibe and I really, I told you already, I really think that it could go awesome in a nursery. I just think it would be so cute as a little changing table, but we'll see when that right buyer comes along. I hope you guys enjoyed watching here on Dixie Bell's channel. Get subscribed because I will be here every Friday for FFT Fridays and you don't wanna miss our next flip. Also, we release Monday and Thursday videos over on our channel, Furniture Flipping Teacher, so be sure to get subscribed over there as well to continue to follow along on our journey. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> so I know that at the beginning of this video, we were at home and then we were at an event and then we were back at home. Thank you guys so much for bearing with us. If you're interested in seeing how that event went for us, we have a complete recap video over on our channel. So be sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the flip side.